on the news, Tinubu seeks debt forgiveness for Nigeria and other developing nations at 79th United Nations General Assembly. Presidency announces Tinubu's desire to reshuffle cabinet. And ASU threatens fresh strike, issues 14-day ultimatum to Nigerian government over lingering issues. Thank you for joining us on News Now on TV 360 Nigeria. I'm Simisa Lachiko. As world leaders deliberate on wide-ranging issues at the ongoing United Nations General Assembly, President Bola Tinubu has called on them to prioritize debt forgiveness for Nigeria and other developing countries from creditors and multilateral financial institutions. Tinubu, who is the chairman of the Authority of Heads of State and Government of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, made the call at the 79th session of the general debate at the UN headquarters in New York, United States. Represented by Vice President Kashim Shatima at the high-level annual global event, the president said countries of Global South would not make meaningful economic progress without special concessions and a review of their current debt burden. President Tinubu also urged the UN Security Council to give Nigeria and other African countries permanent seats at the council as a way to strengthen its relevance and credibility. Africa must be accorded the respect that it deserves in the Security Council. Our continent deserves a place in the permanent members category of the Security Council with the same rights and responsibilities as other permanent members. Mr. President, your assumption of the stewardship of the General Assembly presupposes that you will be seized with the progress of the implementation of the UN's Sustainable Development Goals. We note that most developing countries are significantly lagging behind in the achievement of these goals, largely due to a lack of resources available to finance their implementation and the burden of unsustainable external debt. It is our expectation that the adoption of the Pact of the Future for the Future will change the narrative, reposition economies, and translate into concrete measures that provide solutions to the challenges faced by developing and least developed countries. This is particularly significant in our region and the Sahel, where human development indices are low and depressing. It is for this reason that we reiterate the call by countries, especially of the Global South, for reform of the international financial architecture and promotion of a rules-based, non-discriminatory, open, fair, inclusive, equitable, and transparent multilateral trading system. We are aware of the debilitating impacts of corruption on global prosperity and national progress. Process of corruption and illicit financial flows constitute a huge chunk of resources needed for sustainable development. The recovery and return of such funds to states of origin is a fundamental principle of the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. Therefore, the international community must promote practical measures to strengthen international cooperation to recover and return stolen assets and to eradicate safe havens that facilitate illicit flows of funds from developing countries to the developed economies. There is also the urgent need to promote peer and inclusive tax regimes in the world. Meanwhile, President Bola Tinubu has expressed a desire to reshuffle his cabinet and removed some ministers termed as underperforming. The special advisor to the president on information and strategy, Bayo Nonuga, who confirmed this to State House correspondents on Wednesday at the presidential Villa Abuja, says that contrary to insinuations in some quarters, the current government has recorded significant achievement in its quest to transform the economy. Onanuga added that Tinubu has ordered his ministers to ensure they engage the public by publicizing the government's actions in their various ministries. I don't have any timeline. The president has uh, expressed his desire to reshuffle his cabinet, and he will do it. I don't know whether he wants to do it before October 1, but he will surely do it. Uh, so that's what I will say. Is the plan to amend the National Identity Management Commission bill 
2024. They call it National Identity Management Commission Amendment Bill 2024. This bill will amend uh, the law that was made in 20, I think some years, I don't know, some years ago. And uh, it now provides, if the National Assembly passes that bill, it provides that all, everybody living in Nigeria, foreigners, all of them will now be registered and be given NIN, especially once you are, you are doing some work here and you are earning income, you will be registered and be given NIN so that you can be taxed. Your NIN will give you your, the, the kind of tax identity and you can also be taxed. You come under our, our tax uh, structure. That's one of the bills uh, to amend the National Identity Management Commission. Uh, that's the, uh, the law that set it up initially, which precludes foreigners from being registered. They now be registered under that amendment. The Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has issued a 14-day strike warning ultimatum to the federal government to resolve some lingering issues dating as far back as 2009. In a statement issued on Wednesday, President of ASU, Emmanuel Osodeke, says the body is seeking the conclusion of the renegotiation of the 2009 FGN-ASU agreement based on the NIMI Briggs Committee's draft agreement of 2021. It also demanded the release of withheld salaries due to the 2022 strike action and expressed frustration with the government's lack of commitment and delay tactics. Other issues include the proliferation of universities by federal and state governments, the implementation of the report of visitation panels to universities, the reversal of the illegal dissolution of governing councils, and the adoption of the university transparency and accountability solution as a replacement for IPs. To judicial matters, the Senate has confirmed the appointment of Justice Kudirat Kukireyaku as the substantive uh, Chief Justice of Nigeria after screening on Wednesday. President of the Senate, Gautrila Kwabio, read uh, President Bola Tunubu's letter during plenary on Tuesday following his letter seeking Kikireyakun's confirmation as the CJN. Back in August, the National Judicial Council had recommended Justice Kikireyakun to President Tunubu as successor to the former CJN, Justice Ulu Kayode Ariwola Kikireyakun, who is the second Nigerian female jurist to serve in that position, has called for improvement in the laws to enhance the nation's independence while underscoring the restriction in the number of cases presented to the Supreme Court. I am of the view that many matters should terminate at the Court of Appeal, especially inter interlocutory appeals. There's also a situation where pre-election matters come all the way to the Supreme Court, whereas in national and state assembly elections, the substantive elections terminate at the Court of Appeal. I think all pre-election matters should terminate at the Court of Appeal. So many matters need to terminate at the Court of Appeal so that the Supreme Court can really live up to its designation as a policy court. In giving my CV, I said one of the things that I'm known for is integrity. I'm also known for being strict on discipline. And therefore, in order to ensure that the integrity of the, of the judiciary is maintained, I will ensure that the code of conduct is fully complied with. I will ensure that there is zero tolerance for corruption. Will the Senate approve? the nomination for confirmation of Honorable Justice Kuridat Kekere Kung for appointment as Chief Justice of Nigeria. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The aye serve it. The nomination of Honorable Justice Kuridat Kekere Kung for appointment as Chief Justice of Nigeria is hereby approved. 
In other stories, the Minister of Interior, Ulubumi Tunji Ojo, has directed an unconditional and comprehensive investigation into allegations of bribery and corruption within the Nigerian Correctional Service. The probe follows a bribery allegation made by, by Idris Okunaye, known as Bob Risky, in a video released by a blogger, Martins Ose, known as very dark man against a top officer of the Nigeria Correctional Service. In the viral audio, Bobrisky also claimed to have bribed officials of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, with 15 million naira to drop the money laundering charge against him. Reacting to this development, the EFCC's head of media and publicity, Dele Oyewale, says the commission's chairman, Ola Olukoyede, has constituted a team of investigators to critically investigate the matter. Bobriski was released from the Kirikiri Correctional Center on August 5 after six months behind bars following his guilty plea to Naira abuse charge preferred against him by the EFCC. Corruption, poor treatment of inmates and the lack of comprehensive rehabilitation programs have been identified as significant challenges Nigeria's correctional facilities face, which hinder, hinder their ability to reform inmates genuinely. But well, let's get reactions. I'm now joined by security expert and former assistant director at the Department of State Services, Dennis Amakri. Thank you very much, for, sir, for sparing time. Now, what's your reaction to these allegations of bribery within Nigeria's correctional facilities which the interior minister has now ordered an investigation arising from the case between the EFCC and uh, uh, cross well-known cross-dresser Bobriski. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me here. Um, see this is something that is well known to a lot of people. You know the corruption that goes on in the correctional services is something that they have to look at very, very closely, you know. But it is not just in Nigeria. It's all over the world. You know, even here in the United States, you have the FBI just uh, concluded um, uh, an investigation into um, a correctional facility in uh, Connecticut. So you find out that uh, this kind of thing happened. But the one in Nigeria is so brazen where uh, you find out that uh, all kinds of corrupt practices, you know, um, nepotism, uh, trying to bribery and corruption, and all kinds of things, embezzlement are going on in that area. So um, the minister has uh, said that they should go ahead and um, uh, investigate, but I, who is going to really do this investigation? I don't want the EFCC or the Correctional Service to do it. I think the DSS should turn their search light on that particular uh, correctional facility and find out, get to the bottom of what is going on. It's a it's an international problem, but how damaging are these allegations to the nation's integrity and what approaches can be adopted to tackle this trend in Nigeria? Uh, well, it is very, very bad. It is a poor uh, situation that we face. Yes, it is an international problem, but um, of course, Nigeria has to be worried about their own, you know, because right now um, we have... Uh, uh, all kinds of uh, allegations coming up. Uh, some very, very uh, uh, well-to-do people who go to prison don't actually serve the term, you know, and in fact, they are not corrected. Uh, so that, that is what, that's the meat that is coming out of this. It's not just Bob Risky, you know, but uh, we should investigate to find out is everybody that is committed to that uh, correctional facility staying there, uh, are, they, are they actually serving the term or are they just staying outside in their, in their, in their houses? You know, uh, of course, personally, I've even seen some uh, situation where uh, people don't, um, uh, don't, don't, don't sleep in the prisons. Uh, they go out and sleep and in the morning they come back. You know, there are stories like that. You know, so there are so many things they can do by strengthening the policies and procedures of the prisons 
and then of course improve staff training because a lot of people don't really know why they are there. You know, staff training, accountability, and of course transparency. Things should be very, very clear. And then they should enhance the inmate program so that we know what is happening to them. Sometimes they lock them away and nobody knows what is going on until they come out. Is it truly a correctional facility or is it prison where you lock people away? Yes, there's a difference in these two. And I think this is the time to look at it properly. Sure is a lot of work to be done. Well, security expert and former assistant director, Department of State Services, thank you very much, sir, for lending your thoughts. We'll take a short break, but still to come, Lebanon on the brink of uh, destruction. UN chief warns a global debate following Israeli strikes. Stay with us for details. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And hey, wait, do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the Construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the GoTo app. If you want to know how our commonwealth is being expanded by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by Other People Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, that is true. <laughs> of course, I told you. Welcome back. Let's take you through our major stories. As world leaders deliberate on wide-ranging issues at the ongoing United Nations General Assembly, President Bola Tinubu has called on them to prioritize debt forgiveness for Nigeria and other developing countries from creditors and multilateral financial institutions. Tinubu, who is the chairman of the Authority of Heads of State and Government of the Economic Community of West African States, made the call at the 79th session of the general debate at the UN headquarters in New York, United States. Represented by Vice President Kashim Shatima at the high-level annual global event, the president says countries of the global south will not make meaningful economic progress without special concessions and a review of their current debt burden. We also told you that the Academic Staff Union of Universities has issued a 14-day strike warning ultimatum to the federal government to resolve some lingering issues dating as far back as 2009. In a statement issued on Wednesday, President of ASO Emmanuel Osodeke says the body is seeking the conclusion of the renegotiation of the 2009 FGN-ASO agreement based on the NIMI BRICS Committee's draft agreement of 2021 and demanding the release of withheld salaries due to the 2022 strike action while expressing frustration with the government's lack of commitment and delayed tactics, among other issues. In case you missed any of our news bulletins or for more updates, you can catch us on Limex World TV and AVO TV or log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube at TV360Nigeria or download our mobile app on Google Play Store, Huawei App Gallery and Apple Store on Facebook or at TV360 online.
Let's switch to business. Okwemi Ogosheni has the latest. What's happening, Okwemi? Thank you, Simisola. Well, Nigeria's export volume to Nigeria Republic has sought significantly in the second quarter of 2024 following the reopening of borders, a decision implemented by President Bola Tinubu in March amid political tensions caused by the coup in Nigeria Republic. According to foreign trade data by the NBS, Nigeria's export to Nigeria Republic skyrocketed by 204%, climbing up from 6.72 billion naira in the first quarter of 2024 to 20.46 billion naira in the second quarter of 2024. Now, as a result of this growth, Nigeria Republic has become Nigeria's eighth largest trading partner in Africa, now accounting for 0.87% of Nigeria's total export volume in the second quarter of 2024, up from 0.30% in the previous year of 2023. We'll take a short break now and be back with Stock Market Report. Green day for Nigeria's equities market as the market recorded the third consecutive bullish win this week on the third week day of trading, increasing by 0.42%, with the market's capitalization at 56.89 trillion naira. Now, Seplat Petroleum Company topped the chart with a sizzling 10% share price jump, wrapping up the day at an impressive 4,103 naira, 10 cobo per share. Often, their use was Flour Mills Nigeria, which closed at 60 naira, 50 cobo per share. Now, at the close of today, Today's trading session on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, investors exchanged a whooping 603 million shares across 9,723 deals, racking up a market value of over 12 billion naira. While for our global stocks, stocks globally struggled on Wednesday to maintain momentum, fueled by China's monetary stimulus measures, which could oil retreating and the dollar under intense pressure. Now, this affected all our global equities, as you can see from the screen behind me. That's the UK FTSE, the US Dow Jones, and Japan. Pants and the as they all ended in the bearish territory. Now, in the foreign exchange markets, the Naira has experienced its third dip this week, trading at 1,705 Naira against the US dollar on the black market. The pound is valued at 2,270 Naira, while the euro stands at 1,865 Naira as well on the black market. That's it on both business and stock market reports. Back to you, Simi Salah, for the rest of the news. Thank you very much, Okwe. Uh -huh. And on the foreign scene, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, has warned world leaders that Lebanon is on the brink as clashes escalated between Israel and Hezbollah. Um, according to Lebanese authorities, the Israeli strikes has killed 558 people, 50 of them children. The UN chief has now cautioned against the possibility of transforming Lebanon into another Gaza, which has exposed deep divisions in the global body. The level of impunity in the world is politically indefensible and morally intolerable. Today, a growing number of governments and others feel entitled to get out of jail free card. They can trample international law. They can violate the United Nations Charter. They can turn a blind eye to international human rights conventions or the decisions of international courts. They can thumb their nose at international humanitarian law. They can invade another country, lay waste to whole societies, or utterly disregard the welfare of their own people. And nothing will happen. We see this age of impunity everywhere, in the Middle East, in the heart of Europe, in the Horn of Africa, and beyond. The war in Ukraine is spreading with no signs of letting up. Civilians are paying the price in rising death tolls and shattered lives and communities. It is time for a just peace based on the UN Charter, on international law, and on UN resolutions. Meanwhile, Gaza is a non-stop nightmare that threatens to take the entire region with it. Look no further than Lebanon. We should all be alarmed by the escalation. Lebanon is at the brink. The people of Lebanon 
the people of Israel and the people of the world cannot afford Lebanon to become another Gaza. Let's be clear. Nothing can justify the abhorrent acts of terror committed by Hamas on October 7th or the taking of hostages, both of which I have repeatedly condemned. And nothing can justify the collective punishment of the Palestinian people. And on sports, Africa's richest man, Aliko Dangote, has admitted he has regrets he did not buy English Premier League club, Arsenal. Billionaire Dangote, who is a big fan of Arsenal, says he had the chance to pay $2 billion to own the London Gunners. He, however, insisted he could not have indulged in such a venture amid the construction of his petrochemical refinery in Lagos. The London Gunners are now worth double the previous amount with market value in excess of $4 billion. Four-time major champion Naomi Osaka says she didn't want to have regrets after confirming she has teamed up with Serena Williams, a renowned former coach, Patrick Morutoglu. 26-year-old Osaka split from Belgian coach Wim Fissett this month as she attempts to return to form that propelled her to the top of the women's game. Osaka, who won the China Open in 2019, admitted being a little wary initially about Moritoglu, given the 54-year-old's long and successful association with the legendary Williams. Well, that's it on News Now. Many thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.